Today I'm going to replace the U-joints in this drive shaft. The drive shaft is of an MGB and like most English cars or drive shafts they have flanges at both ends and the splines are built into the shaft itself. Um, now this is a typical U-joint that we have to uh, replace. If you look at the U-joint now, if I take off the cap and you just look inside here, you'll see that there's bearings inside it. These are what are called needle roller bearings and they ride on this surface here which is the bearing surface. You have to be very careful when you put this back in. One of the things that is a problem when you put U-joints in is if this is misaligned or you catch one of the needle roller bearings with a shaft, you knock it over and it will lie across in the bottom of the U-joint itself. If you do that and then push this into place, you'll find that the needle will actually come through the back of the joint. So you have to be very careful when you assemble it that you don't move any of these needle rollers and push them in and flatten them out or get them jammed in the side because it's quite difficult to tell sometimes when you're squashing it together in a vise. And another thing that you have to be careful of and you have to realize is that this is a bearing. If you get dirt in it or you get grit in it, no matter how small, it's going to affect the life of the U-joint itself. What we're going to need to do this job is a sturdy vise on a good bench. You can see my bench is metal. Um, the vise is clamped to it. You need a ball-peen hammer, a two-pounder. Don't use a claw hammer or a construction hammer. Use a ball-peen hammer that's a two-pounder. If the hammer's weighed in ounces, it's not heavy enough. It's got to be a two-pounder minimum. The reason I've got the handle sh shorn off, that's a completely other story, but I'll tell you that again some other time. I've also got a flat chisel. I blunted the end on these chisels because I find it very handy. It's just like a punch, except it's got a bigger area. Circlet pliers. And I've got two sockets. One of the sockets fits over the outside on here, so the joint actually fits inside the socket. You can try the new one to see if it fits. The other socket I've got, I use it to bash this in, which I'll show you in a minute. And it fits on the outside of that, and as you can see, it's a nice fit on there. And it also fits extremely well inside the drive shaft. You can use an extension on the end of the socket as well, so if you feel a bit more comfortable holding the extension when you whack it, right? Now, if you're looking for a vibration in the drive shaft, there's a couple of things you should look at now before you start. You should make sure there's no dents in the shaft or obviously there's no kinks in it or marks, it's got to be straight. Usually if there's no dents in it, it's pretty good. You check the joints and see if they're stiff. If the joints are stiff, that will cause a vibration, and that's on either end. Um, and by, I mean, by stiff, I mean if it's difficult to turn. Um, another thing that you've got to look for is the movement on the spline. The movement on the spline's got to be easy. Um, where this usually is a problem, it's not usually a problem on an MGB because the axle moves up and down, but on like a TR6 where the differential is bolted in the back and it's just on rubber mounted in the frame along with the transmission there's very very little movement between the two parts which means the actual splines on the drive shaft doesn't they hardly move they have to be there because you will get a vibration but if it seizes up it's got very little movement in it on a TR on an MGB it's not usually a problem the other thing you've got to look for is make sure there's not too much wear on the splines because obviously they wear if this is going up and down and going round and round, they get wear in them. Um, again, not too much. You can actually buy a complete brand new dry shaft complete. Um, anyway, we're not going to do that. We're going to put joints in this instead. Okay, so we start off with our vise, and the first thing we have to do is use our sockets and set it up. Now, what we have to do on the dry shaft is remove the circlips. There's two kinds of circlips come with these U-joints. As you can see, one's the circuit, it's got internal grips on it, two little holes so you can put circlip pliers in it, and the other one is just the bent kind, and you, you can put needle nose pliers in these mostly. Um, the whole trick is with circlips is to try and not break them. Unfortunately, whoever put the last one in here broke one of the circlips before I've even got to it, so we're going to have to deal with that. Um, I'm just going to put it up on a hammerhead so that it gives me something stable to put it on and to loosen off the circlips put that in the top and then give it away and 
this will loosen the circlips and make it a bit easier for me to take it out. One of the other things I do before I actually start is mark both the sides here with the center punch so that when I put the flange back on don't have to be a big mark just enough so I can see it so now when I put the flange back on I line this back up with my shaft to make sure my flange is going back relative position to where the shaft was where it was in the first place so now what we're going to do is put the um, shaft in the vise and I'm going to take the circlips out as you can see I've got the dry shaft in the vise when you put it in the vise make sure you clamp it on this welded part not on the body of the uh, not on the actual tube of the drive shaft because as I said you don't want any dents in it so if you put it in there and then squash it up a bit too tight you'll mark the drive shaft so do it on the weld okay then you're going to be sure um, we have to use our circlip pliers to get in and we just waggle it around and take out our circlip like so and then we just turn it around and do the other side and again I clamp it on the weld so I can do it nice and tight and then we do the second one this one's going to be a bit fiddly there we go there you go you don't have to save them because you get new ones with the uh, with the new uh, joint but Having said that, I would save them in case you go bing and one of them disappears, then you've got another one spare of the old one that you've got. So don't chuck them away straight away. This is a this is a circlet that's been broken. You can see both ends have gone off it. I've been I've, I've been left with nothing to get hold of. So the first thing I've done is take a little screwdriver and I've cleaned it first of all all the way around in here and get all the crap off it. And then I'm trying to keep it clean. Now I'll get it clean. First thing I've got to do is make sure I can move this first. We need it to move, which means if it moves, I've got half a chance it's not seized in. So I've got my centre punch, I'm going to put it right on the end. And I'm giving it a few whacks here. So as you can see, I got it to move. So now I know it's not seized up. Okay, we've, we've got the circlip loose and it's going round when I hit it with the hammer and knock it with my centre punch. But I've, I've got absolutely nothing to get hold of on each end. So I'm going to have to resolve this a different way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the flange off the dry shaft first and I'm not fighting with the dry shaft as well as the flange. So I'm going to lift that off, I'm going to show you how to take that out normally. And normally you would take the U-joint out of the flange the same way. So I'll show you how to do that, then I'll address this problem with getting the circlip out. Now what I tend to do, I put my socket in here now and what I'll do is push this across because as you see sometimes these tend to be a little bit tight so I'll push it to get it started until I get the cap level on the top. This is before I start bashing it. Then I dispense with the socket. And I tighten up my vise. And I leave my shaft loose in it, put the flange against it. And I got the socket that goes over it and put it on there. And I whack it. as far as I can until this comes out of it. And I turn it around. Sometimes you've got to really bash them to get them out. Once we get so far, we can then put it in the vise. Try twisting it a little bit and waggle it off. Now sometimes they're a bit awkward. It's my bloody awkward day today. And you pull it out. And most 
of the time you can get it pull it out and you can get the joint out then with this side you can just get your punch put it on the back of it and just knock it then you've got everything clear now to come back to our little problem with our broken piece in here I think what we're going to do for this particular thing I think we're going to bash this I'm going to put this down and we're going to knock this is the opposite side that I've done that I've got the clip out now so we're going to take this end out first or push it down a bit doesn't have a piece on it you can see now the way that I've done it I've moved the clip right down so now what I've got to do is get a pair of pliers and go at it and I've just got to wangle it out if I can what I've ended up doing I pushed the cap down so it cleared the kit clip and then once I got it clear of the clip I got my center punch and I bashed the clip the third clip down further down inside because it would come out of the slot so I just kept at it tapping away at it and I pushed it down then got it off once I got it down in the bottom then I compressed it in I could get a little screwdriver and a lever behind it I flicked it out and it went somewhere I don't really care it's out of here so now I'm going to continue now doing knocking out the part that was in before and we're going to take this out the same way as we took the other out think back to previously when I had the flange on the shaft we had the circlip that was broken so I took the flange complete with the u-joint off the shaft first to make it a bit lighter but easier to work with normally I don't do that I take the shaft uh, leave it uh, on the u-joint and I take the flange off one of the reasons is because when I come to knock this out and I put this now in the vise to pull my cap out I've no leverage when I had the shaft on before I could turn it and move it off unfortunately to be able to move this with this in the vise and do it in my hands right at the moment it's somewhat difficult in fact I can't do it I don't want to hit the edge of the flange with a hammer not a good idea so instead of doing that what I'm going to do is be sneaky and I'm going to pull this back and I'm going to get a little 716 nut and I get it to go in one end so I shove it in here let me get it to go flat on the bottom and then you turn it over I guess you can see where I'm going with this put it on there keep me joint in and it bashes it right off the end and now with any luck oh, I still can't do it oh there we go so we take the joint out now I can knock this off there and you can do that as well if, if you don't want to be messing around trying to pull it out or you're having difficulty pulling it out do the same thing slip a nut in it give it a couple of whacks you're good to go I've cleaned off the end of the shaft with all the oil and the uh, grit off the end of it and the same with the flange one of the things I got to mention on the flange, I cleaned it up inside here too, used a piece of emery paper and cleaned it all up. When you use the when you when the cross was inside it from the U joint, when you were hitting the top of it on here, the shoulders of the cross part of the U joint touch on the inside of the flange and the same on the shaft. Depending how hard you hit it and how far you went, you'll put two dimples on the end of the hole. Make sure that if these two dimples are in there make sure that you take a round file and you take them out because it might cause you a problem when you come to push the caps in because we have to push our caps further than that and they install further than that so it might cause you a problem now what we start with is putting our uh, u-joint into the shaft what I like to do I like to keep the u-joint on a piece of paper so it's nice and clean I take both my caps off and measure out the vice here 
Now, I take one of my caps and I put it in the end of the vise, in the, in the end of the shaft in the hole. And then I start it off and I squeeze it nice and gentle. I don't go too far with that, I only start it off. Now we take the U joint and we feed it in and we put it into the cap nice and careful so we know where it is, right? Now we stick it in again, we put it in the vise, go as far as we can. Then we take our small socket. put it on the end of the cap very carefully here nice and easy and then making sure we're running on the cap not on the edge of it we push it through you can see the whole thing's going through now be careful you do not push this cap all the way out and on the inside we only go so far now we lift it up this is the bit that's important you get this one you slide the U-joint out a bit, not far enough to come out, but enough to come and make a connection nice in the end of there. So you can feel that it's in the cap properly. Remember what I said about the needle rollers getting pushed down? We do not want that to happen. So we push it in, nice and easy. There we go. Now we check it, yeah, we're good there. It's feeling a bit stiff, so we reposition it because our cap's not going in quite straight. Now, if it stiffens up, just take it out of the vise, slacken it and put it in again. It's feeling good here. Now, what we do is put our circlet at the end of there. And now we just pop the clip in. You put your thumb over the top of it, it's not going to fly out on you. We get it in there and settle it. And we turn it. push it across and you can see it moving across there don't worry when it backs like that's not, a, it's not an issue it's just lining itself up again and we put this in here again we get all of it on the on the ground on the weld get our other one A circle it, pop it in. Now what we're going to do is set our flange up now but you have to remember on the end of here there's a center punch and there's a center punch mark so these two have to go together so we have to be careful of that so what we're going to do is start with this cap and we're going to put the cap in there. Feel it going now to make sure now I've left that on so that I know which way around this goes. I've got my center punch and my center punch here, so then I take the cap off, lob it in here, and I push it through and very carefully put it on the end of the shaft. push it through get the other cap clip on the top on this side
push it all the way across. And then we put the circlet in this side. Again, holding it in with our fan in case it slips. We make sure it's in there. Now we feel the joint, and if the joint's nice and easy, we got it good. Now, the last thing we've got to do is put in the grease nipple, which, as I mentioned, was in there. So we just screw in our grease nipple and then grease it before we put the car in the car. There we go. Okay, so that's it, we tighten that up and as you can see it'll miss. If it had put the grease nipple on the other side you can see it would have interfered with the joint on the end on there. Okay, that's it.